Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you can't hear me, please let me know in the chat. I just like to make sure. So we'll go ahead and get started. Our featured sponsor is Union Pacific Foundation, so we'd like to thank them. Our featured member is Hometown Industries. They have been a member since 2020, so that's super awesome and we thank them. This week's presenter is Zoe Terry, also me. <laughs> I know it's a little weird, but I am the presenter for this week for the Shipping 101 training. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the presentation and I hope you enjoy. Hello and welcome to Shipping 101. First off, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat as we will answer them at the end of the presentation. We will answer all questions, so do not hesitate to ask away. Now let's begin. About me, my name is Zamory Terry, and some of you also may know me as Zoe. I am the e-commerce and retail product specialist for the Ground Nebraska Foundation. A fun fact about me is I am named after the band CZ Top. Here are the key topics we are going to cover today when considering shipping. Can you ship it? Setting prices and packing for success. I am going to share with you four things you should consider as you start building your shipping process. Are your items perishable? For example, are you shipping dressing or meat products? Does your items need to be kept cold or frozen during transit? What size of items are you shipping? Knowing the size of the items you are shipping matters when coming to picking your box size and figuring shipping cost. The last question to ask, are your items heavy? The weight of your package plays into your shipping cost and when choosing your shipping provider. There are many different shipping providers, but these are the three shipping providers we work with here at Grow Nebraska in our shipping department. We have FedEx, USPS, and UPS. When choosing a shipping provider, contact each provider and see what services they can offer you to ship your product. Each provider should be able to set you up with an account representative where you can discuss your shipping needs and negotiate shipping prices. Whether you have talked to an account rep or not, these are two key things we pay attention to here at Grow Nebraska when shipping products. As most of you already know, figuring the size of your box consists of measuring your length, width, and height. A key piece we have learned here at Grow is when measuring, take into consideration if your box is bulging anywhere. The electronic measuring devices will read your package at the widest points. Not using the proper size of box for your products can end up costing you more in shipping in the long run. The actual weight of your package is just as important as the measurements of your box. An example is priority mail and first class. When shipping first class, it must be under one pound. Say I have a 10 ounce bottle of product, by the time you add packing material, shipping inserts, and a box, you could end up over one pound. Knowing this ahead of time can save you in shipping costs and allow you to charge the customer the correct amount. Remember, it's better to have accuracy rather than guessing, so invest in a good scale and a reliable tape measure as you're gonna be using them a lot. There are several things to consider when setting shipping prices. Here are a few we consider important. Will you need to overnight or express ship? Does your item ship with hazardous material? And there are typically fuel surcharges and delivery fees um, to take into consideration when setting your prices. Now that you have all the pieces of the puzzle figured out, you are ready to set your pricing. Are you going to have free shipping? When considering free shipping, keep in mind, is it really free? Customers are always looking for the best deals, but can easily do the math to figure what they are paying. If not free shipping, then maybe you want the customer to pay the shipping at the end of their checkout. This is typically what most businesses do, but again, do whatever works best for you and your business. 
If not that, maybe you want to do shipping included, meaning the shipping cost is included with your retail price. So the customer pays one flat fee to get that specific item to the door. Next step, packaging. Did you know FedEx and USPS offer free packing supplies, which include padded packs, regional boxes, and a large array of other items? This is a great resource as it helps cut costs, so keep that in mind. Another option you can do if it works with your budget is customizable boxes. Of course, this would be the more pricey route, but great traveling advertisement. Here at Grow, we are fans of using recycled boxes because it's great for the environment as well as budget friendly. Remember when saving boxes, make sure they are in good reusable condition. Now that you have your boxes, time to protect those products. There is a huge array of stuff you can use to pack your items. This ranges from bubble wrap to paper shred, to packing peanuts, air pillows, and even more. Just like the boxes, you can reuse packing material if it's in good condition. Here are some examples of how we package our items that we ship at Grow. We ship a lot of glass as well as plastic products. So um, we have lots of experience. As you can see, we wrap the lids of our gallon Dorothy's just to ensure protection and that the lid won't pop off. Then we take bubble wrap and wrap it good and get tape all around it. Next, we have our ceramic mugs, as you can see pictured. We wrap the handle to double protect it and then also put bubble wrap inside the mug. After we do that, we slip it into a bubble bag just to make sure it has enough padding as it's ceramic and can easily break. These are more packing examples we have. As you can see, we have our glass jelly that we wrap in bubbles. Um, a tip for you is if you are having trouble finding a box to fit your products, you can simply just um, trial and error with different boxes and just set your products in there and make sure there's enough room to put padding around the products between the box and the products and also enough room on top. So you can easily check this out by pushing the flap down and making sure that there's no pressure being put on top of your products. And another note is to make sure and put padding on top as customers are most likely gonna use sharp tools to open their package. So you wanna make sure they won't cut any of their items. And as you can see, our promotional items we put on top just to ensure that the customer will not throw them away. So this leads into the promotional items. These are key to your packages and help engage the customers with your business. Your promotional items should be what works best for you and your business as everyone is different. Here are some of our examples from Grow. We have a Nebraska history brochure. Our discount card, which I highly recommend including in your packages if possible, as it will attract customers to want to come back and shop more. We also have our gift basket card that includes our gift box services, as well as our subscription card, which lets customers know they can subscribe and get a refill of their chosen product monthly. Lastly, we have our fun little treat bag, which could be lots of different candies or treats. Here at Grow, we usually throw in some chocolates or microwavable popcorn. But again, when concerning what promotional items to throw in, you do what will work best for you and your business. Here is today's training overview as we have made it to the end. Can you ship it? Take a step back and look at the size and weight of your products, as well as if they are perishable before starting the process. Next, set those prices. Don't be afraid to negotiate those prices and talk with your shipping representative when setting prices. And also figure if you will have free shipping, shipping included, or have your customer pay shipping at the end. Again, whatever will benefit and work best for you and your business. Lastly, packing for success, choosing the right box, materials, and promotional items. It's all about customer experience. Thank you for joining us today. I hope, I hope you all learned tips and tricks to help improve your shipping services. My contact information is on the screen, so please don't hesitate to reach out with any question you have. 
Also, be sure to follow our socials as we are always posting new trainings and fun posts weekly. Again, thank you for being here today and have a wonderful rest of your week. Hello everyone. That was the end of the training and now we're going to answer some questions. I have Clarissa here with me to help out. So our first question was, did you say something about box being higher in one location? So this, I was meaning um, if your package is bulging, when you measure, you kind of have to measure it higher up because when they go through the things, um, it detects it and will know that if you're length and width and height or off. I don't know what just happened. Does that make sense? Do you have anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah. So as an example, if you pack a bunch of Dorothy or something and your lid doesn't shut flush with how the box is designed, then when it goes through the reader, you know, you're trying to read straight, but it'll read over the hump. And so the highest part of the hump is what it's going to read. So if you're sending a 12 by 12 by 12 box, but technically the hump makes it a 12 and a half. They're going to charge you accordingly. She did a better job at explaining that. <laughs> um, Tanya asks for free packing supplies. Do I need a business account with the carriers or can I just use a regular login? So you can actually just continue as a guest and create an account. You don't necessarily need a business account. Anything to add to that? No, I think having just any kind of account, whether business or not, is good. So that way, if you like what you've ordered, it's easy to go back and hit the reorder. Plus, you can track where your materials are at in the mail, you know, if you're missing them. Yeah. Okay. Lindsay asked, how many inserts is optimal? That's a good question. I don't really think there's a limit. Us, we put about like three in there, but... I guess it's really whatever you think is best for your business. I would definitely include inserts that provide your services um, just so the customers know and it catches their eye. And I wouldn't feel it so full. It looks like yeah. you open your mailbox and get junk mail. <laughs> Got either. letters or something. Okay, Tony said, do you have any shipping websites that you would suggest to ship items? So here at Grow, we use Shipping Easy. I'm not sure how much it costs a month. Do you? I don't know. Every one of them is going to have a different um, subscription depending on what you need for your business. But there's ship e shipping easy, ship station, and I'm sure there's like a bazillion more out there. Again, I think you're going to have to look at um, what works best. You know, obviously you can work straight through. Like I, for my business, use just FedEx, so you can work straight through them with negotiated prices too. I don't have to necessarily pay for another membership on another website. Yeah, I would check out your options and do whatever works best for you. Amanda asks, what's the best way to get customized boxes? Why should someone use customized over regular ones? I don't know the best way to get customized boxes. Do you? Well, if you're a member of Grow, we can hook you up with some people who do customized boxes. We actually have, Let's see if I can do this without knocking <laughs> Zoe out. There's one of our boxes we have made. It's kind of hard to see with the green. Um, Jayhawk boxes is who we have utilized. Um, they're a really great member here with Grow Nebraska. You could probably go to almost anywhere that makes boxes. I mean, and then just do, it's always great with any kind of business stuff to make your decision by getting price quotes. And seeing, again, if they can even provide the box you want, because it's not only about the size, but if you have heavy items, you might need double walled, you might want brown, you might want white. I mean, there's all kinds of it. And then the customizable is perfect because you are basically traveling your box through all the shipping channels onto people's porches with really good advertising. Easy to see too. Okay, sorry, I don't, okay. Margie asks, can you give better examples of your thank you package? which I would, I, I'm i gonna guess you're talking about our little thank you gift that we put in there. So we usually do Baker's chocolate and we just put like two in there. Um, 
another thing is if someone spends like an X dollar amount, they could get something different. We also do like microwavable popcorn, um, but there's lots of different options for a thank you gift. Do you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. And Lindsay said, do you figure your promotional material costs in anywhere? Do you try to recoup that cost? Yes, you should always consider that. Anything that should just be part of your shipping costs, because even if it costs two cents, 10 cents to put the promotional in there, the idea behind it would be with putting those in there, it's the retention and the return customer rate. So you can look at it basically on what your customer accusations cost to you as a business. Kind of think bigger picture. Okay. Katie asks, when packing, do you prefer FedEx versus USPS? I would assume she was meaning. Um, I guess that just depends. Uh, we kind of alternate between FedEx and USPS, depending on the size of our package. Um, we've noticed that our heavier packages usually go FedEx, and then our smaller packages go priority mail. But again, it's always changing with different packages. So. And for GROW here, a lot of that has to do, again, with when Zoe referenced meeting with your representatives and negotiating prices. Um, that makes It makes a huge difference on who you're going to use. But again, too, like she said, with heavier packages, a lot of those are going to end up going ground because there are rules when you put things in with the post office. They can't be quite as heavy. Yes. Okay, I've heard Jayhawk. Great suggestion. Thanks. Um, hello, Vicki. And Robert asks, where do you get your bubble wrap or shredded paper? We, have, line. Yep, we order from Uline. Um, or Nashville wraps sometimes. Again, price shopping, look for those sales. And as Zoe said too, we like recyclable. Yes. So we lots all, of people drop you stuff You can off ask us. your friends or family for stuff. Just make sure it's in good shape, you know, not smelling funky or ripped or anything like that. Um, Tanya said, do you have any suggestions on what products would set as free shipping, shipping included, or being charged at the checkout? It's a great question. Do you want to take that one or do you want me to? You got it. <laughs> I would say it's based upon your preferences and how you want to advertise. So, for example, if you have a small item that costs you $9.99, but with, as everyone knows, shipping prices are increasing. And by the time you get it in a box, it weighs, you know, a pound and a half. And that shipping is going to be $15.99. That would be a great time to say shipping included. Just remember, if you do that kind of stuff, take your price tags off everything when you ship it. Because that's where people sometimes will read that and be like, wow, you know, I got gypped by that company or something. So other things to keep in mind, free shipping if you can actually offer free shipping, uh, your price points are low enough and the shipping costs aren't that great, or you're doing a promotional, um, if you do a lot of subscription plans, sometimes people will offer free shipping or they'll do to build their business. They might do a free shipping offer for, say, only people in Nebraska or in this certain area to grow their business. So that's always a good thing to think about there. And... Oh, I guess this is the only two you asked. Okay, so I guess that kind of answers that. Again, don't um, go diving off the deep end when doing this kind of stuff until you know your margins and, and what your business can handle. Because the last thing you want to do is price yourself right out of business because you're trying to offer free shipping or, you know, cut corners or buy the coolest advertising box on the planet. So just keep that kind of stuff in mind. It's kind of like trial and error. Um, there is some mention of extra delivery charges. How do you know? about that? That's a good question. Again, that's where you need to talk to your reps to see if there are. Um, unfortunately, at Grow, we've learned by trial and error. We have mismasered boxes before and gotten charged probably way too much money. I guess that's how they keep in business. Uh, so this is why we're here to try to help warn you guys and teach you guys that those things can happen. And so again, just really quiz your reps if you can get a hold of a rep. Um, Stamps.com is another thing that a lot of people like to use. 
I don't know. I don't have much experience with it. If you can get reps through there, but if you can definitely work with a direct rep, say like I do with my business for FedEx, I am at least able to ask those questions. And then the nice thing about having a rep in your pocket is you can go to them directly if you have billing issues and work some of that stuff out too. Uh, Margie Stamps, stamps.com. At the post office, thank you. Stamps. Yeah, Margie Stamps. And that's why it's good to have an accurate weight and size of your box. Because mm -hmm. they do watch that very closely. Do you have any other questions? Wait, we give them some time. I don't think we missed anybody's. Good question. Why should I use to ship something cold like meat? So again, on shipping cold items such as meat, it's going to depend on the shipping route of choice. Uh, a lot of people can do like an overnight, what you can afford, where your margins are, and what the customer is willing to pay as well. If you're going to overnight it, you can probably get by with ice packs uh, for my business. Unfortunately, I've only negotiated ground right now, so I use dry ice. And you also have to realize how much dry ice you need per pound of meat per distance of shipping. Um, and then figure in some extra in case it gets lost. But then after some point, uh, you know, loss is just lost. And then you got to deal with the customer service from that point. I think it's a good thing to also consider it with anything, whether you're shipping cold or perishable or non-perishable we tend to lose things when they get shipped. So always um, think about what your return policies are, what you're going to do from a customer service standpoint. If things arrive damaged, I know that we can negotiate a lot of times with shippers on damage, but sometimes there's rules. If it says delivered, you won't be able to get any money back. So another thing to consider when looking at how you're going to handle shipping, it doesn't matter who you decide to use. Things happen like that. All the time. Yep. Uh, they can provide, oh, sorry, I should read that. <laughs> Amanda says, I've heard the Jayhawk boxes can help with packaging for cold items. Is that correct? They can work with you on the boxes. Uh, they can recommend a different company to get a recyclable liner. There are many on the market. I think right now they only offer one. So again, you need to probably do some product testing and know your distances and, and again, your shipping method, whether you're ground, so it's going to be a few days versus express and see what you can get by with. Uh, Margie, can you get dry ice at a cheaper rate than going to like a drugstore? Um, probably if I was large enough myself, I know that there are larger companies that can negotiate and get dry ice in. From my research that they've done, I would have to get a, a very large two week supply. And of course, as it dissipates off, you know, the use of it's going to be less and less. So right now I'm just going into the store as well and purchasing it. I think down the road, hopefully we could figure something out like that. It'd probably be a great project for Grow Nebraska. Honestly, we could renegotiate some dry ice prices to share with, with each other. But unfortunately, you have to be ready for a large supply right off the bat. Would it be helpful or okay if we dropped off a few of our small shipping customized box for you guys to use when you ship our products for our advertisement? Yeah, I think that'd be perfect, Rhoda. That's a very smart idea. Yeah, that's good. And then if any of you are shipping items through by Nebraska or Grow Nebraska because you're online with us and we have it in store and you want us to stick um, shipping inserts in those packages, Feel free to drop them, mail them over to us too, because we'll gladly stick them in for help for advertising for you guys. Definitely. Tanya, what do you do when a package is lost or damaged? Okay. I guess I don't know the... You need to ask, so if your package is lost or damaged, you need to ask the customer for photos. Um, that's where, again, if you write up like your return policy or damage product policy, they need to know that like immediately they should be contacting you. 
especially if it's something that's perishable. That way things can, you can start get the ball rolling. Uh, that's also where you would take your photos, your documentation of the sale, and go start the process with the shipper that you used and see what they can do to, to get you refund, et cetera. Again, each is gonna depend on how it was shipped, if it was delivered or not, and what carrier you used. And sometimes you need to ask the customer if possibly their neighbor received it, because that's happened with us. Sometimes it's just over at the wrong house, so. <laughs> or we've had people that um, gave a PO box, so it ended up at their mailbox in town versus at the end of their driveway or vice versa. Yep. All kinds of fun things happen <laughs> when shipping, so you kind of got to be prepared for a lot of things and, and some things you just can't be prepared for enough. Yes. Once the package is out of the building, it's kind of up to the shippers. Great questions, guys. Yeah, do we have any more? I'm just making sure. Do we have any more questions? No. All right. Well, thanks, guys. This is Y'all good do. questions. Good dialogue. Do my little outro. Thank you, Tanya. Thank you. We'll do our announcement. So we want to say thank you for joining our training. Here is Lindsay's contact information. She is currently on maternity leave still, so you can contact me at shipping at grownebraska.org or Clarissa at shipping or Clarissa at grownebraska.org. We both check the shipping email as well, so if it's easy to email one, we'll both get it. Just put that in there. Our upcoming trainings are March 17th, Why You Should Embrace Google, and then we have March 24th, Budget to Success, and April 21st is Selling on Third-Party Websites. So you can go to grownebraska.org and get registered for those, and also look out on socials for the links as well. Um, we also have our Grow with Google series, which is March 2nd. Um, we have a Spanish version from 5 to 6, and then the English version is from noon to 1. So get Central signed up. Time. Central Standard Time. Central Standard Time. I can't talk today. And then we also would like to show out, shout out the Grow Nebraska Women's Business Center in Omaha. So be sure to follow their socials and check out their, web, their website as they're always doing trainings as well. So that is all for today and thank you and have a good rest of your week.